Congressman, you've got until tomorrow. Do you think a deal is going to come? It has to. I mean, the fact that we've worked to, we, we passed legislation out of the House two and a half months ago and that we're still waiting here while you've got people, you saw those unemployment numbers, 16 percent in New Jersey unemployed. Families are hurting. Businesses, small businesses are hurting. We've got to get this done, Stephanie. What's the number one thing that needs to be in this relief bill? Well, for, for me, it's the state and local dollars are key because we've got a $20 billion hole and a lot of our local communities can't afford to pay teachers and firefighters. Huge problem. And then the unemployment insurance is a very, a very big challenge. You've got people now with nothing, no additional support, families that are struggling, I'm getting calls, but they don't know how they're going to pay their bills, their rent, put food on the table. And, and a lot of small businesses called yesterday and said, I need help. I'm going to have to close the doors. I, I, and restaurants are saying to me, what happens when it gets cold in, a, in you know, the beginning of September or end of September? And we, we can't have anybody come to our restaurants. What are we going to do then? So we've got to solve this problem now. And it's absurd, frankly, that we haven't gotten this done. Congressman, stay with me because I want to talk about another thing that has you and a number of your colleagues concerned at the very least this morning. Listen up. Last week, the Trump administration announced a $765 million loan to keep Kodak, remember that company, Kodak, the photography company, to help them pivot to making chemicals for pharmaceuticals, something they have absolutely no expertise in. Well, the news of this deal, guess what happened? Kodak's stock price shot up from two bucks a share to $60 a share with the company's CEO and a group of insiders making hundreds of millions of dollars. I want to bring in NBC's Jonathan Swan. He has been digging into covering this story along with me. John, Jonathan Allen, walk us through, excuse me, Jonathan Allen, walk us through exactly what happened here and why people are so concerned. There's really this uncanny series of events, Steph, as you well know, because you've been digging into this with me. Uh, basically, uh, in December, you saw a lot of people, uh, a very small, I should say, a very small set of people uh, gather a lot of Kodak stock, some insiders, a member of the board. A few of them are actually family members. Um, then in May, you saw President Trump empower a foreign development aid agency uh, called the U.S. Agency for uh, Development Finance Corporation. Uh, basically invert them and say, you don't have to do aid in foreign countries anymore. Now you can do aid to U.S. domestic companies. Uh, and they're making this, they announce a $765 million loan, or at least intent for that loan, to Kodak. That boosts the stock. And then all of a sudden you see some of these folks who have uh, bought all these shares starting to dump their shares as the stock goes through the roof. And then in the middle of that, uh, and this is complicated financial stuff, but there's a convertible bond that goes into play flooding the market with Kodak stock and making it much less valuable for some of the other people that were buying while it was on its run. Um, and so what you see here is a very, very small group of people making a ton of money off a Trump administration announcement that was only made possible by an executive order from the president uh, allowing this tiny agency uh, to start making loans in this country rather than to do clean water projects in, in developing countries. Congressman, to the naked eye, this looks like a pump and dump, pump and dump stock scheme created by the U.S. government. We have all sorts of pharmaceutical companies here. Why wouldn't the government offer a deal like this to one of them? Kodak is a company where the insiders, the company, even in the last few months, was guiding investors, saying uh, they didn't think they were going to be doing so well in the days, months, years ahead. And then, boom, they get a deal I mean, like this out of nowhere. Make I mean, you're right. This company's supposed to make Polaroids, not Stephanie. I don't understand. What I don't get is there's a 25 percent pop in the stock, you know, the day before this uh, this announcement, this loan is is made. Um, all the, the CEO and chairman gets a sweetheart deal on all these options. And then suddenly the stock runs. You're giving it to a company with all these companies that make uh, li there are life sciences companies that make generic drugs and the chemicals for them every single day. And then we give it to the Polaroid company that makes chemicals for photography and, and, and they're bankrupt. No, nothing about this is right. And I think we've got to get to the bottom of it. And, the, and not only should people get, you know, get be held accountable for this is what we called for. But frankly, we got to get the money back and we should give the
those resources to a company that actually that's the obvious thing we've got to do here and it's what we're calling for hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc on youtube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos